And so one of the things we reported in our paper was that in these blocks, these different areas that had been investigated, we found something like 6,700 structures. This is what it looks like from space or from, from an airplane. The LiDAR is able to penetrate all of those trees and give us what's on the, give us what's on the surface. The data that we look in, in, in these blocks of, of survey information is remnants or remnants of human activity on the landscape. That is buildings that humans built, canals, uh, roads, anything that is not typical uh, a natural feature. So what you're looking at here is a series of hills on top of which a large site was constructed. We're, we're finding LIDAR is helping us with the sa this technology that's able to penetrate forest canopy and see what's on the ground below. We're able to see in places like Southeast Asia and the Amazon and in the Maya region that these tropical environments had these really complex and relatively large populations living in these regions for, for long periods of time. Uh, protecting or going and visiting and, and, and seeing if they if, if this can fit into their into their into their management plan blue is for buildings and these sort of reddish outlines are larger kind of platforms on top of which the blue buildings are built the, the suggestion from these data would be that were we to expand the the survey of this particular region or all other regions we would find more of what we found and land use patterns across long areas Archaeologically, we wouldn't do this. Building, 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 all throughout this. Some areas have little patches that don't, and some are more dense. But because they were doing it for completely different purposes, it sort of created a, a data set that we would not have otherwise gathered, but has been very interesting for us. It, it allows us to tell better stories of the ancient Maya people. We have always been able to talk about the ancient Maya, especially in the lowland regions, because of their hieroglyphic texts, because they left us such interesting record of their political history and of their, of, of their, of their sort of uh, sacred or religious history, right? So we've always been able to uh, um, understand, or, or at least we've always been able to talk about th th their rulers and, and in some ways their political history. What we are now able to do is match that information with their settlement and the population and what they were fighting over, what they were ruling over, what they were trading with, right? And who was involved with this? And that's really interesting because it marries the political and the religious parts of, of, the, of a society with the economic, social, and demographic parts because these two now are rich, rich data sets that kind of can talk to one another.